Let's go over labels. You should think of labels as printing or graphics on a, uh, on a material. Uh, we've added a lot of capabilities with labels, so I think this is some stuff that you guys might find pretty exciting. So if I double click on a material, uh, that will take me to the base material properties. Uh, here are any textures that I've applied. And then this third tab is for labels. So this is where we can add things like artwork or graphics onto our part. And we've made some big changes here. Uh, there are a couple different ways that you can add labels onto your material. And you do assign the labels onto a specific material. What we can do is we can either hit this little drop down right here and we can hit add label. The other thing you can do is actually go into your uh, finder or Windows Explorer. And if I go to my desktop, uh, I'll actually get this model and we'll make this model available online to anybody who wants to work with it. Uh, but I can get some label here. For example, this is our little you know, uh, on video picture indicator for our little button there. Um, but we can grab this artwork. This is a PNG with transparency and I can just drag it over and then apply it to that material. And here I can add it as a label. And you'll see when I click add label, it now has that label applied to this material. What's also new is this label is by default in position mode if I do that. So if you see, I can click to reposition the label. I can also click and hold it, hold that uh, mouse button down and drag it around and it'll reposition. So this looks okay for now, and I can now go in and make some adjustments to it. So I'll hit the little mapping drop down and let's change, uh, let's change the scale on this. If you create your own graphics, uh, so for example, if you export uh, your labels from Photoshop or Illustrator or something like that, uh, you can export them with a known DPI value. In this case, because this label is going to be so tiny, I export it with 1600 DPI. So instead of messing with the scale at all, what I could do is just check the little DPI checkbox and then type in 1600 in this case for this label. And now at a scale of one, that label is going to be a one to one representation of the label. So if you've ever fought with scale before, it's really important to know that instead of doing that, you can actually just enable DPI support and then make sure your scale is at one and that will be a one to one representation of that label. Okay, let's talk about positioning the label because uh, that's also something that people get caught up on. If I click on position, then I can reposition this label and move it wherever I want. What's important to no notice here though, is that uh, actually I'll rotate my camera and then I'll hit position. And now when I click, you'll notice that my label is now crooked on my model. So why is that happening? Well, whenever you're working with normal projection, which is the default projection type for labels, uh, that label is going to snap to your camera angle. So if I click, you'll see it's snapping to the orientation of my, uh, of my actual camera, not the camera model itself. But what that means is that if you want to position the label exactly where you want it and you're using normal projection, then just line up the camera so it aligns with your actual view so I can get it pretty close here. If I want more control, I can go over to the camera tab and use a pre-made view, but I'll just line that up. Now, if I hit position, I can click to position that wherever I want. And since I've moved that button over, let's say it's now on video mode, right? But now it's lining up a little better. If you want the most control, what you can also do is go to the camera tab. Uh, and what we can do is we can type in some specific values uh, here, for example, uh, so for this one, I'll rotate it around. If I type in 90 and set my inclination to 90, uh, then I go back to my material tab, use the position tool. Now that's going to be perfectly aligned with one of my major axes. Oh, there we go. So that now that's perfectly aligned. So that's working with normal projection. You do need to keep the position of the camera in mind. Um, but yeah, so normal projection is the default projection type for labels, and it's going to try to wrap that onto your surface, regardless of the shape of the surface. Another example that I want to show really quickly, because it's something that we do run into a good bit is, uh, an, uh something else that happens with the labels. So I'll take a label and I'll get this key shot icon and I'll just click and I'll drag it over here and I'll add that as a label. Uh, if I click to position it, I'll try putting it on that corner or let's select this 
part of the corner right here and then hit my little green checkbox. You'll notice this label does not look like the actual artwork file. So what's happening here? Well, with normal projection, we're projecting those labels onto that piece of geometry. And what we do is we control the depth of that label. There's a slider that you may have never noticed before, but this slider controls how far onto the surface that label is being projected. So let's scale that label down a little bit. Uh, this one I didn't create with the DPI, but now if I increase the depth, you can actually see what that label looks like. And the reason that that slider exists, right, if I hit right click and look at, is to keep that label from projecting too far. Let's say, for example, we were working with a glass bottle or something like that. This way you can actually control how far onto the surface it's being projected. But I'll change that back to the default, and at the default, you'll see it's clipping. Uh, now at five, uh, it looks okay. Uh, I'm not gonna keep it on the corner, but normal projection, that is something that I, I notice people uh, can get stuck with. It's, it's just really knowing about that depth slider. So I'll hit position, and we'll position that logo right here, right? And now it's projecting onto that surface. That's a flat surface though, so that one's easy. Uh, one big new addition for Keyshot 6 is the ability to assign a material to our label. So while we've been working, I have these two separate labels. If you take a look at the label, the label type is set to plastic. This is totally new. So if I wanna actually change the material of a label, what I could do is I can select that label and under label type, I can use the drop down here to change that material type. If I select metal, then that label becomes a metal label. And you'll notice every label also has bump and opacity textures which can be applied. So let's say this icon here was like a, a raised foil. Well, I could duplicate that texture by just selecting it, holding down Alt and dragging it over. And now you can see that that label uh, is being applied as a bump map. So now it's actually giving me a little bit of uh, actual bump texture. Uh, I can decrease that bump height, so make it a little bit smaller, and I can add in a little bit of roughness to that material, right? But now with Keyshot 6, we can apply materials to the label, which is really nice. Those of you who are working with uh, this in production, you know, let's say you have a metal foil or some sort of treatment, uh, then yeah, we can actually select a piece of, uh, a, uh, select a label, use a little drop down. We'll also change this one to metal, right? And so now that's metal and I can duplicate the texture. So now it's also a bump texture, decrease that a little bit. But now from a simple 2D graphic, I actually have this, uh, this pretty nice raised texture on my label. So it's a bump texture uh, on my material. Whenever you're working with this, let's say we went back to our parent material, that metal. Uh, and let's say that metal had a procedural noise texture, because I love that, I throw it on everything. Uh, I'll just use the noise texture and scale that down. And um, let's make that a little bit more obvious. So we have a tiny little bit of texture on our material. Well, under the parent material, that metal, I can select apply bump to labels and it will blend my bump texture onto those labels. So it's not something you always have to do, but it is good to know that you can have it so that the parent material, in this case, the green metal, uh, actually has that bump texture applied to its labels as well. So play around with those labels, right? We have a lot of cool tricks in there that you can use with this. You can change the material type, uh, but adding materials to labels is one of the biggest new additions that we've, uh, that we've added in six. But yeah, so that's just a quick overview on labels and materials on labels. Lighting is how we really make our scene pop. Watch the next tutorial on HDRI lighting. For more tutorials, quick tips, and webinar recordings, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can learn more at keyshot.com learning. Thank you for watching.